Price on all, welcome back everybody to Fearless in Devotion, the Wrexham AFC podcast, sponsored, uh, as you know, by the Fat Ball Bar and Restaurant. Wow, what a week makes. I can see it in the positive expression on everyone's faces. Um, what well, a difference a week makes, I should say. You know, should everyone uh, just get over themselves, I think, is, you know, listening to the podcast last week, it was all a bit negative, wasn't it, Andy? Are you feeling better? Yeah, of course, because I think I think we always knew that um, one positive result changes everything everything around. I mean, Parkinson's always been a percentage manager, so he will never get too low about losing at home, and he won't get too high about winning away. Um, but what he will do, try and do is build enough points to get us promoted. And I think he thinks we've got a strong enough squad. He thinks he knows how to sort of manoeuvre them to the end of the season. And I think yesterday was pretty pivotal, wasn't it? I, I think the biggest thing was, um, you know, we were sort of asking, well, even my my group earlier when we were like, like watching the game uh, in London, we were sort of like saying, right, do we want Stockport to win? Uh, yeah. And I went, yeah, of course I do. Because it's not about winning the championship. I don't, I don't care about the championship. You, okay, yeah, you'll get a nice trophy. But no one remembers that, oh, yeah, they were champions or anything. All they mm. remember is who's got promoted, right? What we need to do now is build a nice little gap from fourth and we get promoted. That's what I want. And going away to Grimsby, we've done that. Fair play. I thought they didn't even lay a glove on us yesterday. I thought we were superb. Yeah, it was pretty convincing, wasn't it, Tim? Yeah, really, really good. I think it's pleasantly surprised probably most of us, to be honest, because, you know, Morecambe was decent, but obviously down to 10 men. But this was just different. This was everything that we know that, that they're capable of when they're on, on their game, all of them. And, yeah, it was, it was a proper promotion-esque performance all from, from start to finish, really. I mean, obviously, yeah, they got one back, but Jesus Christ, we could have we could have put five or six on them. It was so good. It was just just really, really nice to sort of be relaxed at half time, because yeah. I think for the first, you know, we all know you, even previous Rex and teams gone by, you can have a healthy lead, but you're still never quite sure if it's enough. Whereas like yesterday, I was like, there's only one way this is ending, and it's clearly going to be a winage. It just depends on, on by how many. It's just. Mm. It's great, and I'm happy for the players because they're coming through a little bit of criticism. Same with Parkey coming through a bit of criticism, but if you're going to answer, answer your critics, do it emphatically, and that's exactly what we've done. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Liam, we've mentioned on the podcast before, you know, that uh, our downturn in form is sort of loosely based timeline-wise, with Tom O'Connor not being in the side. And here we had Tom O'Connor back. And though it may not have been the Tom O'Connor show, um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, we looked back to our best again, didn't we? Yeah, I'm a big Tom O'Connor fan. I'll even, you know, tolerate mullets, dodgy moustaches, whatever he wants to whatever he wants to do with his facial hair, I'll allow it. Um, but no, it was really good to see him back in the team. I was quite keen to see him. And actually seeing him back in midfield as well just seemed to... So I'm sure we'll talk about Andy Cannon plenty in this um, podcast, but I thought Tom O'Connor playing in that role helped open the game up for Cannon. You want him playing further forward. I think that's where he's at his best. Um, and people were saying sort of first 15, 20 minutes, oh, O'Connor looks a bit rusty. It's like, well, yeah, he's been out <laughs> injured for a good chunk, so he's going to. And then sure enough, as soon as he, he gets going, he's absolutely class. And that uh, that perfectly weighted pass for the... Uh, for the cannon goal was just superb. So happy to see Tom O'Connor back. And I think it just helps everything in, in midfield as well. It just looked like a really balanced midfield free with him there. Can I just say the Tom O'Connor show ran from 1984 to 1987, starring Tom O'Connor on ITV. It was a comedy. Um, I'm looking for oh, Eric Griffiths was in it. Uh, remember him from Chocolate Block? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so quite a, quite a heady cast. Yeah, can indeed. I also can I also add in the absence you'd be delighted to know, Andrew, in the absence of Book of a Conqueror this week, I was so happy with Tom O'Connor yesterday that I started singing his name to a well-known Oasis classic in my car, hands-free, of course. You know, I was in full control of my vehicle and came up with something like this. Ta-da! We've got Tom O'Connor. It's a rock and roll star. Ta-da! Was that Liam? Was that Liam Gallagher then? Could have Some been. of the eyebrows. 
So there you go. On a gal ago, to be honest, but uh... still got more money. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Very good. Uh, should we should we talk about Andy Cannon's uh, performance? But actually, let's talk about his second goal because I mean, why why should we even talk about anything else? Because what a finish! What a goal! Andy, I think we're about to try something really quite revolutionary in podcasting. We're going to do this thing called a screen share. Hide your emails. Hide your emails. (laughs) That's Andrew Gilpin at hotmail.com. And he's on mute. Lovely how this works. Right. There we go. Right, let's go. Let's watch this in all his glory. He's still got it on mute. There's no sound. Who needs sound when you can watch this? Yeah, I mean, and we'll just narrate it out to O'Connor. O'Connor down the right, crosses it in for Andy Cannon. The Lion King's there, he smashes it into the fucking net. Does Andy know he's on mute? <laughs> no, does he hell? Clearly not. <laughs> you know, we did tell him before he started it. Um, he but yeah, I mean, what, what, what a goal, what a finish. Um, one of the best breakaway goals we've scored under Parky, I would say. Superb. I love the fact that Andy's still on mute and the entire <laughs> thing was on mute. But uh, I, I, I've always had this thing, right? One thing that's always bugged me, for whatever reason, certain things bug things when they're watching matches. And it's always annoyed me that teams play Wrexham and then they'll, they'll do a counter-attack in like four passes. They might not score all the time, but they just sometimes just get it from one end of the field to the other. And I'm like, why can't we do that? And we very rarely do that. So to see that yesterday, I mean, it... It has to be goal of the season. It has to be just because of the fluidity, the confidence, the positions they took up. Yeah, they made they made that that Grimsley defence look like it was running in, in mud or treacle. It was so good, and um, yeah, great finish as well. It's not an easy finish, by the way. You know, from that no, angle, it's a stonker, point, isn't it? Yeah, that angle on a bobbling surface as well. It takes a little bit of a bobble, so it's such a good finish. Um, yeah. But what Mullin? I mean, Mullin in that. I mean, obviously, there's the lead tackle on the edge of the box, but then Mullin's footwork. He, if you watch it back, yeah, it's class. He leaves two players on their ass. He leaves two players on their ass, and that shows that uh, he's coming really, really into his into his A game again in terms of his mm. his pace and everything. So, yeah, I mean, it is goal of the season for me. I think. Yeah. Does it compare with any other goals in recent Wrexham history, Tim? It does actually, and I'm I'm yeah. going to make a better hash of this than what Andrew Gilpin has just done. He's still on mute. Oh, we, um, we had we had the same thought, didn't we, Tim? While uh, you prepare that video, that that <laughs> you know we we don't score many goals sort of at a breakaway like that anymore. And it was it was no, a, I mean, a real joy to watch. I can't even remember when this was, but it's it's a, it's twenty a day, twenty ten twenty ten. Okay, it's been a while. So twenty ten <laughs> away at Wimbledon at their old ground. Um, this is the seventy fifth minute. And this this happens. Stage in the game, they've got to try and keep it tight. Gullum sweeps it in, diving head across the face and goal. It scrambled away. Harris edge of the box now. Feeds it a goal to the left. That's a clever pass. Mangan burst past his man. The Rex are on the break here. Mangan on a halfway line. Feeds it to Orben. Pop was a mark inside. Orben puts it clear. Of Orben. Just the goal to beat. Brown comes off his line. Pop goes round him. And he slaps it in. Tremendous finish by Pogba. Rex and take the lead. What a break that was. Exactly. What a break that was. Mm. Speaking of Pogba, if anyone's got a number for him, we're keen to get him on. Um, is he not in but... prison? No, that's the other one. Oh, is it? That's his brother. That's the famous one. The more uh, famous one. No, he's not in prison. He's just banned, isn't he? I was say, definitely well, he clarify that. No, 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 none of the get... Pogba brothers are in prison. Let's just <laughs> knock this <laughs> on the head say, before we uh, go. Uh, one, otherwise... one, is much, one is much more rogue than the other. Yeah, otherwise we're going to be asking for 10 buy me a coffees for each listener to try and get us out of that hole. Uh, moving on. Um, uh, thank you everyone, by the way, for your comments on the YouTube video and on X, formerly Twitter. We do appreciate it. Liam, um, you've uh, collated some of the comments. Any, any interesting ones from last week? Well, YouTube is like a, it's like Andy Gilpin's uh, email inbox, which I won't read out the, uh, the address cause he gets, uh, gets a bit angry. Um, so there's a guy called Dr. McCoy. I can neither confirm if he's a doctor or the real McCoy says, Andrew, how are you so confident in automatic promotion? MK Dons are on fire and will pass Wrexham shortly. Feels like a tidal wave has been coming from the top seven, eight teams for a few months and Wrexham are in a raft soon to go under. Oh, 
Very poetic. Hang on, hang on. Right. How good are MK Dons, right? So obviously they beat his first game, first game of the season. We were undercooked, right? Okay, that's fair enough. Right, we should have beaten them uh, away. Um, we were like minutes away from from, from doing that. Um, Will Boyle actually got in the way there, but that's but you know we outplayed them there. They've lost at Stockport five nil. They they lost at Grimsby. Fuck me, how do you lose at Grimsby? I mean, are MK Ridge. Don really that good? This guy's got a PhD, mate. I don't you know. I'm not really. Not really sure if we should doubt He's a space doctor, so you know. <laughs> and I think you could feel quite vindicated after this weekend's results and performance. Hindsight is a, is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is. It really is. But also, Andy, you were you were also in cloud cuckoo land, <laughs> uh, according to Mark Nichols, because our form hasn't changed in ages. The current form shoes. Oh, sorry, shows we will whim, whimper out of the playoffs. Guys, you want yeah. to cheer up for Christ's sake? Jesus wept. Chill out. Sorry, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have shouted at listeners like that, should I? There, there was a nice. There was a nice one for Andy somewhere. Uh, great insight as always, and many thanks for the fid mag that you posted in a timely manner. Thanks and a good read to boot, Andy. P.S. Um, the miserable mood Hoover was tops though. I'll be using that. Thanks, Tim. That's from John Wells. So I think yeah, I think that was referring to you. So it's. Bit of a shit sandwich, that one, Andy. <laughs> Praise for your posting, oh, but well, shit, shit, and then some good bits. That's not really a shit sandwich, really. It's <laughs> shit near bottom. That's why I'm not in management. <laughs> shit near bottom. <laughs> that's, the, that's the name of Andy's side side <laughs> podcast. That's my the shit near bottom. Shit Neapolitan. <laughs> Right. Okay. Oh, Th- thank you for that. And, and as ever, thank you everyone for um, commenting in the various guises that you, in, in the various ways that you can, it's very much appreciated. Um, should we quick, couple more things on the game. Uh, Arthur, uh, Andy, why does he get beaten on his near post? Oh, how many times is this now? A couple of times, I think three, last three goals, maybe near post. Uh, I mean, look, Arthur's a great keeper. He really is. And every keeper at a certain level has a weakness in their game. It looks like Arthur's likes to get beaten by the near post, which is, you know, it, it, it's a big old frame to get down, isn't it? Uh, and if you're going for the near post, you're absolutely twatting it from a from pretty much a point blank range if you're trying to beat a keeper from there. So, yeah, it's um, it's the sort of thing that you sort of think, right? How can a 24 year old keeper with all the attributes that Arthur has get better? Well. Maybe that's one thing he needs to work on, on his game. But really and truly, you know, the, the, the lad's got quite a bit going for him. So I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive him this. Harsh, harsh words, I think. I think his defenders need to stop that shot coming in. Comes yeah. through a sea no, of bodies. You think he's not He's not expecting it because he thinks someone will block it? Yeah. He's not 24, though, is he? I, I sort of, yeah. I watched it. I watched it back and I just think that he's slightly unsighted by it and... I don't know, I'm massively pro a conquo, so I just think the positives outweigh any... Ne- you know, there will be weaknesses to his game. He's playing in in League 2 for a reason, albeit for a team that's um, got a decent budget. But I just think how assured he is when he comes for crosses and things like that, I think those are the real positives that outweigh anything. But like you say, you know, all keepers have got areas of their game to improve. Um, but we'll all be hoping that he signs in the summer, won't we? So, yeah. He's 22, and he... Give me palpitation. Right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, a keeper like Interaf don't don't come into their own until they're right twenty six, twenty seven today. So he's got two yeah. years on it on him more yeah. than we thought as well. So that's always good. He, he was he was born two days before nine eleven. There you go. There's the oh. crap um, fact of the day. So there we are. Anyway, what's next? I was going to say, Andy. You know, you should just just lay off him, right? I mean, this kind of abuse. I don't know, lay off him. I just, my... I just said he's got he's got all the attributes to make a top keeper. You haven't done yeah, a book of songs for him, have you? Him. Yeah, Tim. Tim written songs for him for goodness' sake. Um, mm-hmm. We've got to be consistent as a podcast. Um, I'm, gonna, right. I'm gonna have to come up with something for next week now about being beaten at his near post. So it's gonna have to come, <laughs> come into my thinking. Oh, yeah, that's the challenge. Right, we've got you. We want to do predictions for the last seven games. That seems excessive to me. Should we do that after the Easter weekend? Yeah, let's go do, right. do it down to six. Six let's... is fine. Can we talk about right. Boyle? Because I know, Tim, what do you think about Will Boyle? What did you think about Will Boyle a month ago? And what do you think about him now? <laughs> you know full well what I thought about him a month ago. You know full well, you shit um, <laughs> I I just, yeah, I, I didn't, I was fuming because obviously, 
two sendings off in three weeks. Um, stupid as well, you know, stupid sendings off. It was deserved, you know, he <laughs> clobbered the fella at Newport, daft so early on in the game. And then I said to my mate at the time, Milton Keynes Don, I said, I bet you he gets to second book in here because it was just the way his body position and stuff was. So it annoyed me. And it, yeah, just because of the disruption we had in the defence, I thought for all the sort of expertise he brings from a higher level, I expected a little bit more uh, professionalism, I guess. I don't know if that's the, the correct word for it, but I expected a bit more. Anyway, I digress. In and out, in and out the side due to, the, due to those disciplinary issues. He's come back in. I think he's proven everybody long, wrong, me included. Um, he's settled in there now. He just seems he seems more confident that he's got two uh, more quicker centre backs with him, shall we say? Because O'Connell is is brilliant. He's brilliant. He was brilliant again yesterday. Max Cleworth again, solid as a rock. So I think because he's got some some players at the back who can nip around the field a little bit quicker than what he can. And he's got all the aerial ability in the world. I think that's just given him a bit of a, a bit of a leg up as well. But he's now beginning to show why he's a sort of hard as nails, brick shit house kind of defender, really. So delighted for him. You don't change that back three now. He's he's, no, he's I mean, made, I mean it, he's made it his own, hasn't he? No, totally. I mean, I mean Hayden can't for me he doesn't get back in even if he is fit. I mean, he only stays fit for a couple of hours. But you know he, he he can't he can't get back into that that back three. I wonder if I wonder if we've seen the last of him. Um, I really do think, you know, it's... I really do think that Max has made that right hand position his own. He he gets the ball and he brings it out. There was a few instances of that yesterday where he really sort of adds to adds to our sort of adds to our you know sort of playmaking. Um, he's just a good all round player. He's just getting better and better. He's getting more physical. Liam, what do you think about Max? Uh, I've always loved him, and I re- the one thing I want to say in Parky's credit because I feel like he's been getting a lot of flack these last few weeks, probably from us included, and that's that he's actually really persisted with Max as well. Because I think there was a time earlier in the season when you thought this lad looks out of his depth here, and it can go two ways: he's either gonna, you know, sort of completely sink under, or he's yeah. gonna come out better for it. And all credit to Max, and and it, as I said to Parky for continuing to play him because. He's only got better as the weeks have gone on. Um, just coming back to Boyle, one thing that surprised me is when I first saw him, I didn't realise he was actually relatively comfortable at playing the ball out of his feet as well, though. Uh, there was one mazy run against uh, <laughs> against Tranmere last week. I was just like, is this the same? Is this the same fella from earlier in the season? So I think you're seeing that he's got more attributes to his game. I don't know why he wasn't doing that. Um, sort of earlier in the season. I don't know what his fitness levels were like or anything like that, but now he he looks like a decent player and one that we want to keep hold of, which if you'd asked me, like Tim said a month ago, completely the opposite. I wonder if um I wonder if he knows now that because he had Mendy on the left, he knows that Mendy will cover him, which when maybe McLean wouldn't, but actually with Mendy's injury, we might be getting McLean back in on the left. Um Tim, do you know much about what what might be wrong with, with Mendy? It looked to be sort of like a hamstring, was it? And if so, that's that's six weeks, isn't it? Oh yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It wasn't I don't think it was addressed in in Parky's post match um, press conference. So I'm not sure. We'll probably know more in the coming days. Um, didn't look great. It kind of looked a little bit timid as he sort of limped off. But you know, Parky's. Got McFadden back in that twenty-two. Um, it's a good job he did as well. To be fair, um, the timing couldn't have been more more on it. So, but then McFadden's come in, and I thought he played really, really well. I thought he adapted really well, considering the lack of game time he's had this season. Came in, got himself stuck in, took it, was on the end of some right meaty challenges as well. And yeah, I, I, he offers him and Mendy obviously similar position, but. They offer they both offer something different, and I think Mendy's got the speed and, and the brawn. But you know, do not be surprised to see McFadden start again. You know, against Mansfield, I wouldn't be at all surprised. But yeah, the Mendy thing, I genuinely don't know. I hope it's not serious, um, because obviously of what he brings to the side. So fingers crossed. But you know, we've we, we've seen it already. Nobody expected Tom O'Connor to come back so swiftly. Nobody expected George, George Evans to be training back on the grass could well be involved on, on Good Friday. So you never know. And Parky's clever at the moment with, with doing that, not 
giving too much away as to where our injured players are. You don't you don't want to give the opposition a leg, especially when Mansfield are next next up. So yeah, very shrewd shrewd management. Yeah, let's hope that's not too serious. Before we come to some off the field matters, um, Tim, we've just had obviously Sunday when we're recording this, we've had the women's team results, which was uh, pretty devastating. Yeah, um, yeah, the ladies in front of just over two thousand people at the Kairas were edged out three two to Swansea City. Last minute, I think there's seven minutes of added time. They scored in the yeah. ninety second minute to uh, to pip it, which is a bit of a sickener. But I mean, if if Karen's second goal was the team goal from a Wrexham point of view of the weekend, and then Lily Jones's solo effort. Oh yeah, it. did you see it? It's, it's just, unreal. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous to hit it to put your laces for it from whatever that was. Was it thirty-five yards? About that? They yeah, it's about thirty-five, forty yards, wasn't it? It was pretty forty pretty yards far. to hit it, get it on target, and get it over the keeper's head. Keeper's off the line, but still mm-hmm. to get it over the over the keeper's head is quite something. So, great goal. <sighs> Nothing more than consolation, I suppose. In the end, obviously, Rosie Hughes scored with a header to make it two-two. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they nicked it right at the end. But you know, we keep saying it, don't we? We keep repeating ourselves that this is a big learning curve for the women, but they're probably ahead of it. They're ahead of where they where many might have expected them to be at this stage of the season. They keep building, they keep growing. Cardiff and Swansea, the ones that that are leading the way in regards to that, and, and they want to want to topple both. And I'm sure in you know in the seasons to come, that will happen. So yeah. It's been, a, it's been a good start, hasn't it? It's been a solid start, and sometimes you want something to build from rather than at a peak too soon and then fall off. It's quite a sort of, you know, they've earned their place and we're we're there sort of in a strong position to push on from. But it's not like the men's thing where you can you can just usher out fifteen players and bring another load in. It doesn't quite work yeah. the same way. So you, you you you're using a similar pool of players. There's been a few changes here, there, and everywhere, but it's just about they've had to up there levels as well you know mm. they're now a semi-professional team they're still balancing the job and everything else but they're up in their game and there'll be more additions in the summer i'm sure so going from strength to strength and you know people will, will might mention the crowd but obviously rob and ryan were in town last time that adds another dimension to getting ten thousand people in there but two thousand crowd a couple of years ago if you take the the the, the nine thousand crowd out from last season would not be sniffed at. People would have loved that, unless we forget Wales women probably get a similar crowd. So you, you've got to you got to look at it like that. So it's still yeah. a good crowd, regardless. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, right off the pitch, um, crew tickets, big big away day, big derby. That Andy, did you get yours? Um, right, Tim, stop listening. Uh, yeah, I got one. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be going to Nice that weekend, but um, I reckon I can probably. Just a long weekend in crew was much more. Well, um, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't going to go to Nice until Saturday morning, so I might just sort of switch it to a Sunday, Sunday morning I'm flight. So gonna, I'm going to send you shitloads of pictures of Nice over the next few weeks. You, <laughs> you really should go. This is Nice. Nice looks this nice. Is, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is the Crew Railway Museum. Where are you going to go? Andy, I thought you hated France. I do hate France, but I'm going to go to Monaco, and it's another country off off the uh, off the tip list. Has he frozen on purpose? I went I went to Nice um, in September for the Rugby World Cup, as you know, um, and it was delightful. It's a fantastic place, and nice. this might endear you to it more. It's a bit more like it's Italy because I didn't realise this, but it was actually a part of Italy until a staggeringly late period. I can't remember what it was, but it was not actually that long ago. So the architecture and the look of everything, sort of the pastel coloured sort of buildings and houses is very Italian. So I'm sure you will It sounds like you're trying to get me to go to Nice as well. (laughs) Well, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. The food's fantastic. Okay, right. I've got one, right. Okay, I got one and I've been quite lucky with tickets for the back end of the season. I I did not get a tramway ticket. I did not get a Stockport ticket. So I know, you know, I know what it's like to to miss out and I just don't think there's a God-given right to to be able to get a ticket. I, I said to myself at the start of the season, I think there I is. Knew, I knew I was not going to get to every game this season. Every game that I wanted to probably would I probably wouldn't happen. And you know, it's fair enough. We've got what six and a half thousand season ticket holders. There is going to be a lot of demand for these for these big games. I've just have managed to get lucky. Tim, I know you didn't and I, I really commiserate for you. Um. <laughs> 
Wow. Said with said with such, such a, <laughs> yeah, said in such a deadpan Frankie <laughs> Boyle fashion. Um, don't you worry about me. I'm sorted. So oh, ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you know, innit? Oh, wow. I'm, right. I'm not going because I was being chivalrous to people. I thought yeah. I've only been I've only been to Blackburn away all season, so I didn't even try. I thought, you know, oh, I'm such a such a nice, kind, yeah. thoughtful person like that. I'm not even gonna try for crew. And there was you thinking I'm gonna be a bastard. I'm gonna I'm gonna piss Tim off by getting a ticket. Yeah. Terrible. Who's laughing now? But still, uh, uh, well four, done if you four, four contingency plans I had for that game. So oh, one of them came good. off. Well um, done, well. everyone uh, who got a ticket. Um, and I mean, but in on a serious note, right. how how can we make this fairer? Come on, Reese. How can we make this fairer? What would well, you was... say? You're 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 the fairest person on on this podcast. I'm very fair. I'm known for my fairness. Yeah, I've always said that. Um, I think I think what you can do is I think some kind of loyalty scheme is doable, right? I mean, who who is it that are doing it? Was it Stockport recently? They've got one where it's tiered. So if you've been to five away games. Your level C, ten level B, fifteen plus level A, whatever. That to me is relatively easy to implement. Um, it's not perfect, but the thing is, no system is going to be perfect, is it? It's, it's not possible. Um, but that to me would see whatever whatever's the easiest thing to do out, out of ad, from admin purposes. Because I think then for away games in particular, that's doable. For home games, you know, you, you then retain, we don't want to make it impossible for newcomers to come and watch yeah, a game, yeah, right? No, that's right, the right. that's the difficult thing. And and that, I think, is fair to do with home games. With away games, I think it is very frustrating if, you know, you're going a lot and then for the you go all season and then you cannot go to the sort of biggest game in the run-in. in the run -in. I can see why that is incredibly frustrating. I don't think that's totally fair. Just the one thing on the loyalty scheme, and Tim, you might know a lot about this, about about what happens with Wales. Would you sort of find that people would just buy tickets and not go just to buy the tickets? So, for example, Colchester away, not everyone's going to go to that, but you would buy a ticket just to, just yeah, to get out the loyalty scheme? They... they... They were wise to that in the end, especially for away tickets where you would have to collect them. You would have to collect your own ticket by showing right. your a proof of ID. So you know, it, it, there would be certain circumstances where, of course, you wouldn't be able to make it. Oh, blah, 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 my wife's having a baby, whatever. I, I, can I can I legitimately pass it on to a friend? Yes, we'll change it in his name and he can come and pick it up with his proof of ID. So there are there are ways of doing it. But I was, trying, I was thinking about this. Yeah, that that is a good way of doing it because you will get the the sort of loyal fans that have gone it and, and done the the hard journeys everywhere in Europe and, and whatever watching Wales. So that is a good thing. That's not going to happen for Wrexham because you're, you're not going to be asking four thousand people to, to to pick up their ticket before a match day for for a, for a small window. Slightly different when you're abroad and and, and most fans are there the day before. It's I, I'm. I agree what you're saying. It's not going to suit everybody because everybody's going to have different needs and 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 they're going to have different perspectives and how they see a, a fair system. And it's going to be difficult. It is going to be difficult because it's not going to it's not going to suit everyone. Um, so I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know how they're going to do it. The first thing would be get promoted because all of a sudden it becomes less of a problem when you go to bigger grounds. Yeah, you got bigger away attendances. Yeah, yeah, bigger grounds, bigger allocations, less of a problem. Definitely much less of a problem in the championship. Now, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and I don't know what systems the club have got in place to say, well, I don't know, uh, Tim had a season ticket from, from these four seasons and then he went to London, therefore didn't have them. And then he came back and had them again. So I don't know how they're going to decide if they wanted to go down that route. Do you then verse it on season ticket holders? But then you're one, Andy, but you can't always make it back to the game. You know, you've paid your dues for your season ticket but you usually will allow somebody else to go to the match instead of you via the ticket platform or whatever, okay? So nobody yeah. misses out. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. It, it was, I was like you. have been very lucky with tickets this year. <clears throat> I, was on, I was on that ticket portal, and when it opened up, there was nothing in about, I'm not even kidding, five, five seconds of going on. So it's literally, yeah. I was a supercomputer, or it is the luck of the draw. And I was like, I was... I felt anguished for that entire day. It's like, what if it happens? What if it happens? Why? And I'm not there. And then you get, you know, there's, there's bigger shit going on in the world than missing out on a, on a ticket a crew. That's that. That's you know, you have to put your selfishness to one side. And what I will say, people putting things on Twitter saying ticket for crew away, don't be a dick. It's yeah, just and they stop it. 
Come on. It, it, people will do it for a bit of a laugh and a wind up, but it's just, it does boil the piss over the people. Also, there's a lot lot of people replying to those tweets saying, oh, yeah, I've got free tickets. Love them to go to a, a yeah. Can can you just check that before, um, before all, all the bots. Go over any money to those bots, please? That's all um, the bots. Look, at the end of the day, we may well get more. A friend of mine who, who I used to work with in Crew, he works at Crew Alexandra. He told me there's absolutely no way that we will get a big, bigger allocation. But seeing as crew are now have now dropped off a little bit, the yeah. top three, they may well some of their fans might go. Fuck, I can't if it keeps on going that way. They might not be able to fill that that stadium, so they may well look to to maximise the amount of seats they got there and go. Right, we'll give back to another three hundred, four hundred, whatever. So you never know. You never know. But all the hospitality things went months ago, and the, and crew are trying to flog this three game mini season ticket to try and get more people on board and, and entice people in, you know, fair enough. Yeah, bad luck everyone who didn't get it. Well done everyone who did. Make some noise when you're there. It'll be a big game. Um, lots of other business to get through quite quickly, though. Liam, uh, season ticket prices frozen for next year. Good news for people like yourself? Yeah, very happy with that. Uh, I'll admit I felt pretty annoyed went with some of the price increases last season, but I don't think you can argue whatsoever about the um about the club freezing them and i i thought they might someone mentioned this and it did made me think you know would they leave it until they know whether we got promoted but i think i, I i'd hazard a guess that if you were to compare our season ticket prices if we were to go up to league one i would imagine they look quite favorable um i think mine is just trying to think off the top of my head around 380 three, something four, like that i'm three yeah. seven four yeah yeah i think it's it's roughly the same um <laughs> So I, I can't really complain too much at that price. I think we're getting good value, uh, you know, especially at home where put games like Tranmere aside, you mostly see mostly seeing uh, decent results as well. So happy days with that. One thing I will say about that, and it, and it is great that they've frozen them again because it kind of tallies with the whole community aspect and, and making sure that they don't you know, stray too far away from that. It has been mute, mooted before. There's no mention of it yet. Hopefully it's something that, that will... That will be discussed again, but obviously, you know, there are a lot of people out there where they can't just decide to do magic 400 quid, 500 quid plus, especially if you've got kids, you know, out of thin air to, to imagine that money. So other clubs have done the whole thing of paying it over so many months. Why can't we? You know, it's I can't see how it's a major issue, you know, when you can pretty much clarna everything these days if you want to buy something. So why should it not be the same for season tickets for those who want to spread the cost, for those who find it hard to meet those payments, and for those people who've just got a lot of stuff going on? So, you know, we all know about the cost of living. So it is food for thought, and hopefully the club will, will do that at some stage. Yeah, that's a fair comment. Um, any listeners who are season ticket holders and you think that the club should do that, let us know. And if, you know, it's always something we could put to uh, people that come on um, when they do come on. Um Right, documentary. Um, we've had the release date, haven't we, Andy? Um, what are we expecting? And also, it's great that it's coming so soon, right? I mean, next month. Um, remind us of the date. Yeah, so it's the 18th of April. Uh, I think they're catching the zeitgeist of the season, really, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I, I think last last time round, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of engaged fans now in America who know exactly what's going on with, with the club day to day. So it seems a bit... Seems a bit silly to 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 have such a wait for the documentary. Uh, they've managed to reangle it a little bit. So on 18th of April, we got episode one, which is about the summer friendlies in America and the return to the football league. And then, and then on the same day, we've got new players take to the pitch, shock departure, which I imagine is Ben Foster. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, and this team tries to find its footing. Now, what I will say is, um, hopefully, I think Fearless is quite. Is is quite involved in this in this new season. Uh, I mean, we could end up on oh, the cutting you've room put, floor. You've put a kiss yeah. of death on you. You've killed that man. Maybe, talk about maybe, maybe. maybe. I knows? hope they drop you now because you've got a ticket for crew. So first we got a lawsuit from the bloody Pogba brothers, and now we've got this. <laughs> Whoa. Um, oh, speak- oh, I mean, it's, it's good though. It's good, you know. They they, they, they out, help asked us to get involved. We've done a little bit for them. We've done a little bit of right. filming. We don't want to say too much because we yeah. just we just don't know. Don't bring it up then, mate. 
There'll be a disclaimer at the start. Of Fearless and Devotion were removed from this episode due to an ongoing, ongoing legal court case. Ongoing legal legal yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it all serves us to your original point, though. I mean, we had Josh on, didn't we? For anyone who didn't hear it, um, Josh from the um, production team uh, who who's been working on the documentary, and he was telling us about how, you know, it's earlier this year, but actually their ambition is possibly to get it really soon. So that turnaround from what we see on the pitch and what we see on our screens is possibly weeks, um, wow. you know, even days, who knows? I mean, so it's it's exciting and it'll be exciting to see how they cover that end of that season, how quickly they manage to churn that out. Um, and hopefully it'll be something good to watch. I mean, one thing I, I am sort of thinking, right, this is season three. Do you think we need to get keep getting promoted for a season four and a season five? If we stall somewhere, do you do you think do you think that the interest in this wanes a little bit? It probably wanes a bit, doesn't it? But uh, I mean, the beauty of it is, and the beauty of having one of, if not the most famous film star, sort of involved in some way, is that all 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 you know, they're, obviously they're 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 a double act for us, but I mean, in terms of global audience all, all Ryan, Ryan Reynolds has to do is kind of be involved a bit more and people will watch it as much you know there's a huge appetite for that but also I think that you know you look online and stuff it all seems weird to us still but it's amazing still how many people buy into the story have bought in and I've bought in quite casually you know we yeah. know the people who have bought in and are you know messaging us and are really involved in the community and are watching all the games every week but there are also a lot of people from what i see online who are sort of you know dipping their toe in every now and again and the kind of people that might come over and watch one match and also they'll watch the documentary and they might buy a, a shirt or the odd thing but they're not going to be diehard as every week and so i think that that market is still quite strong if that makes sense yeah, I mean, a lot of people in work have just come up to me and said, "Oh, I've started the documentary. I've, I've, I've quite liked it. I mean, I've you know, I haven't watched every one of them, but you know, yeah. I, I know that it's a good thirty minutes where I can blast a few in a in in a in yeah. a night and not feel like I've wasted my time. If you know what I mean, it's just like yeah. there's enough there for a football fan, but there's enough there for people who just want to see what you know what, what it's like in Wrexham and the surrounding areas. Yeah. Strangely, my mum has never watched it. My mum and dad have never watched it, right? So this is my mum and dad will like record this morning and keep it if there's like 30 seconds on Wrexham or Wrexham's even mentioned. But then a whole Hollywood documentary <laughs> about their town that they've lived for all their lives and they're there, oh, I'm not really sure this is for me. <laughs> it's just a bit baffling, isn't it? Well, That's this, morning, this morning is a that, fantastic really, programme. You know, how do you think Ben and Kat are doing in their first couple of weeks, Andy? Who? Ben and Cat, Cat Dealey. Isn't it not Cat oh, Dealey? It is, yeah. yeah. My yeah. mum, like my mum and dad record this morning and watch it at night. How <laughs> weird is that? This evening. Yeah. And then they're like, that is odd. They that is like, odd. Let's, they just... We should do a separate podcast on, on your parents' TV okay. viewing habits. Yeah, okay, what do they watch in the morning? <laughs> probably uh, probably the, the news from the night before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right. We have. Um, a message don't we Andy do you we have do, it ready do. yeah we do I, I've got it here so I, I asked for 30 seconds they've given me uh, a bit longer than that but that's fine so it's my disclaimer this is my brother-in-law Matt Matt Paco who's also got a mate called Paco which is confusing so this is Paco too this is not my brother-in-law but this is the other Paco but, but I mean how many people call Paco in Wrexham two well this is both of them right okay so I'm going to play this now i'm just gonna make sure it's loud enough can you just give us a thumbs up if it's too loud or too or too quiet good evening fearless in devotion and thanks for letting me speak on your podcast tonight my name is paco anderson and myself and two friends matt and steve have set ourselves an epic challenge for a great local charity we're going to walk over 130 miles from the Principality Stadium in Cardiff to the beautiful Kairas Stadium in Wrexham. We're starting on the 22nd of April and we're hopefully getting back in time for the last game of the season, which is Wrexham versus Stockport on the 27th of April. We're raising money for Dynamic Wrexham, which is a centre for children and young people with disabilities. 
Uh, Steve's son, Theo, goes there and benefits from the services they provide. It's a really, really great charity. This centre means a lot to so many children and families in the Wrexham area, with activities and groups put on by staff and volunteers on a daily basis. It's a fantastic place, and as with many charities, fundraising is paramount to be able to sustain the good work they do. We'd love to raise as much money as possible, so please donate if you can. Any amount will be greatly appreciated. We've called ourselves the Wrexham Ramblers, so if you get time, pop on our Instagram, which is at Wrexham Ramblers, and our Just Giving link is on our page there. Otherwise, you can come and support us at the Mice Gwyn on the 27th before the Stockport game, and we'll have facilities for you to donate money there. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back in time because myself and my two sons are season ticket holders, um, and obviously, we want to be seeing the boys promoted again. Last year, when we were standing on the pitch, was amazing, so hopefully, we can get over the line and do the same again this year. So, yeah, please donate. Uh, go and have a look at our page, and thanks for your time. Up the town. What He didn't mention if they've got a ticket for crew or not. <laughs> I've got their tickets. <laughs> I'll sponsor. Um, can I just say, how hard is it to do a voice note for two minutes? <laughs> so fair play to. It was to very Marco very Anderson. eloquent as well. Not not a, not a slip up at all. Um, we should get him on the podcast. Get him on we the podcast. Play. He's better than all of us. I was just yeah. looking at their route. What a lovely walk that's going to be up through the Y Valley. Up bike, yeah. Up, yeah. Um, kind um, of. Um, are they are they going to do office Dyke? That would be oh, cool. Um, that, that, remind, that reminds me of some fans who did it from Wrexham to Cardiff for the mm. um, LDB Vans trophy final. Yes. 2005, a couple of lads did it. So, yeah. Well, I just great. say, I thought we were the, the Wrexham Ramblers. Isn't that what, what we're known as? Uh, I think you're thinking of race course ramble, mate. Oh, that's yeah. Not, yeah, not sorry. Race course ramble. I forget, I forget these things. Sorry. He's doing a marathon, by the way, so good luck to him as well. Yeah. Come sponsor Matt at race course ramble. His links are on his page. He's done just done another... 30k today or something so shout out oh, to him for nuts. for doing that another good cause well done yeah um shall we take a very quick but enjoyable trip down memory lane because the day that we're we recording this can you put one in post production I could, I could try um it's 11 years to the day today sunday recording this since um we beat grimsby in the fa trophy final one of the coldest days in the history of humankind but also a brilliant win. Um, Andy, we've talked about it many times in the podcast, but just sum up how great a day that was. You met Carl Connolly in the pub, didn't you? I mean, do I have to talk about this again? I talk no, so don't talk about it again. About it I, I just said it so you He didn't want to talk about it when I spoke to him about it last week. Yeah, so, yeah. Did he sort of like get a doll out and, and say... <laughs> <laughs> denied, denied all knowledge. Denied all yeah. knowledge. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not very memorable. Um, loved it. Uh, probably my single... The single most emotional day um, supporting Wrexham. Just the whole fact that, you know, there was adversity to even get there. We managed to get there. Uh, we had a great night at the Old China Hand, I think it was, in, in Angel. Um, Declan Swans played. Um, I fell out with a guy on a bike, and that nearly came to blows. So that was quite memorable for the people people around me. Um, loved that night. It was so good to see so many sort of familiar faces, but in, but in London. And then the, the day was just... Look, it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a classic match because I think there was two it was very even, yeah it was two very evenly matched sides and it was freezing absolutely I've cold yeah. ever been extra uh, time was really good though wasn't it yeah it was it was exciting and mm. and just just to have that have that penalty shootout where we're victorious we've not won at Wembley since so you know that's uh, let's never go back there but it 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 was great to be there for the first time I think. Really and truly, me and my mate Chris, who done so much, like we've been supporting Wrexham together for thirty years. We were just we were so emotional at the end. I think there was definitely definitely tears tears there until until uh, until Carl saw me uh, really, and then he was fine. Uh, but yeah, look, it would be this is why we do it, isn't it? This is why we do it. This is why we put up a wall of pain. 20 years of shit football. This is to have those moments like that. And you need yeah. those moments. It made Wrexham a going concern <laughs> then. And it probably kept the club afloat. So the likes of Ryan and Rob would buy it all those years mm. later. Mm. It just, it just, 
engaged the fan yeah. base again. And we had a lot of kids there. That's their first sort yeah. of big thing about watching Wrexham. I'll come to uh, Tim and Liam for their recollections very shortly. Um, but I just thought Facebook memories, uh, I decided it, it appears to film most of the penalties being taken that day. Landscape, obviously. This is the early <laughs> days of mobile phone technology. And I just thought I'd play you Johnny Hunt scoring the, the winning penalty just for the... A 19-year-old, Reese. What? How old were you then? Yeah, it was. It, we went mad. It was great. I didn't I hear was a word. I didn't hear it. Reading, so it was didn't, name, didn't hear nothing. It was just dead air. Didn't hear anything. It was going mad. Oh, gosh. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just imagine it was people going mad because that's what You and I both know that dead air is a crime, Reese. <laughs> dead air is a crime. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, it was, it was class. I was at university in Reading. And as you say, it had been pretty rubbish supporting Wrexham for the. Uh, only the LDV to shout about in about 10 years. So, yeah, it was amazing. Tim, great day. Yeah, I was in the press box with Andy. Um, and I just remember we were looking around and going, shit me, there's a lot of Wrexham fans here. A lot. I It didn't really... It's, so, it's such a massive place. And we always knew nowhere near getting half full. But... To see how many people, how many people had sort of dug dug themselves out of their drives that day with the snow and all that to get down there. It was horribly cold. Yeah, it was it was, it was a, a magical day. Um, it, what, I'll be honest, it was my most emotional one up until the Boreham Wood game last season. That 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 trumps it by a mile for me, just because of everything I was riding on it. Because there's so many people that that weren't there that I wish had had been there, you know. So. So that beats it for me, I think. Um, but I want to know why Andy fell out with this bloke on a bike. I um, don't think you've got away with is, that is, story. Is this the tale where you were reversing while you were telling him to come on then? Is that is that is that the one I'm thinking of? Um, yeah, that did happen. So basically, <laughs> I came out the old China hand. I was a few pints deep. And then this guy like, was past me on the bike. And I was like, oh, you prick. Uh, and, and then he stopped. And then I went, oh, yeah, I'll have you. But I was just like, sort of uh, <laughs> like, uh, you know, like um, when you get like a, a truck reversing. <laughs> and then he just and he just rode off and I said, yeah, you better ride off. <laughs> I kind of feel like I was there now you said it. Yeah. It was that that old, uh, oh, me versus like, I think it was Jeremy Vine. I think the guy's name was. <laughs> <laughs> a camera on his helmet. Oh, yeah. Very good. Liam, sum up your thoughts in 30 seconds. Uh, pretty special. I can remember the anxiety of thinking, because we went down on the train uh, and I had to run for the train and fell on my ass on Crispin Lane. And just thinking, though, that there weren't going to be that many Wrexham fans joining us because we we're hearing all these stories of, well, we'd obviously had to dig mm. our way out to get to the station, but other people. Uh, but then actually getting there on the day and there's just 20,000 sea of red, absolutely beautiful occasion special day live long in the memory yeah it was class um feels like a very long time ago now a lot has happened since um let's quickly talk about wales although we are a rex and podcast um of course we talk about wales when necessary and it's a big week for wales um tim uh you were there on thursday um great comfortable win don't think it'll be as easy on tuesday no no, no, it won't be as easy. Um, their fans will be in full voice with additional flares, no doubt. How <laughs> they get them into the Cardiff City Stadium is anybody's guess. But they'll be in there, no doubt. Yeah, very different proposition. However, Wales go into it in with such confidence. I mean, mm. I mean, we, we were always confident the other day, but I don't think it, in the nature of, of the way it panned out it was so comfortable. Probably could have scored six or seven. And it was just nice to see all the players play with a degree of freedom. I think I think that whole specter of Gareth Bale retirement has now faded. I think it, it loomed for a little bit, and they they knew that they had to step up, and now they are stepping up. And the big plus is that most of that starting eleven, bar Danny Ward, are playing regular first team football at the clubs, which is massive. And that showed in, in that in that performance levels that they went rusty. They know each other's games. 
Robert Page not to everybody's taste, but I'm delighted for him. The, the game plan was was spot on. They had a lot of the ball first half, but couldn't do anything with it. And we scored some absolutely cracking goals and it was just a really great occasion and it all sets itself up for another one. And yeah, uh, yeah, one 90, 90 plus minutes away from, from the Euros in Germany in a couple of months' time, has to be said. Yeah. Speaking of Danny Ward, are we any nearer my dream from a, a while ago, Andy, of signing Danny Ward when we get to League One? Um, I think we need to get to League One first. And I think if Arthur puts pen to paper, I think that that probably blows that one out the water. Mm. I mean, what what is Danny now? He's second or third choice at Leicester. Can I just say, right, before we get into that, can I just say that everything that was everything that was wrong with Wales at the World Cup is right with Wales now? The energy levels for that whole eleven is absolutely nuts. It's off yeah. the charts how much those guys run, right? And to think that you can put Dan James on after you've run about, you've really tested a, a team for for seventy minutes, and then you put Dan James on, and, and he's he's running he's running the other way past you. Um, it, it's nuts. Um, a, a player I didn't know much about, but loved watching on Tuesday was Jordan James. Um, mm. I thought he was fantastic. I mean, really, really good little player there. I, I didn't know much about him, but him and Amdu in the in the middle were, were were superb. And there's a there's a there's a lot to be happy about there. And you know, so I I don't really I'm not really sure if we will get through on Tuesday. But what we do have is a good core of a young team that can really really try for these major tournaments in sure. the, yeah. the next yeah. Think, uh, and then... Atalanta in, in the Italian league we're looking at Jordan James they're trying to mm. get him into the Italian leagues which will be a really good coup I mean he's he's far yeah. too good for for Birmingham for his age he's really really I mean, a lot of people were, yeah people were like so thinking that people who from Birmingham who watched you Bellingham some people think yeah. he's even better uh, at that age but, but yeah, I mean, the Danny Ward thing, I agree with you. I think it could come to us. Obviously, we've had him on the pod before. I think he's disappeared off socials ever since a bunch of last knobheads give him some stick. But Danny, if you are listening and you want to give away that um, lovely Wales March 1 shirt you wore a few days ago, pretty pleased with a cherry on top. Thank you very much. Cheers. You're desperate for that, aren't you? <laughs> oh, mate, it's such a nice top. And I, I, I very seldom beg for anything. But crew ticket. <laughs> Not on yet. You like, like no, you know, no. I'm saying yeah. No, they like they will be awful kids that turn up at matches. Please can I have your shirt, Danny. <laughs> yeah. I'll go through on here next week with a sign. <laughs> I want the Rob Page uh, green jacket. That's lovely. But I looked on JD and they've only got it with a sponsor. The sponsor on the front. Well, Liam's got form for nicking coats that don't belong to him. <laughs> Yeah, that's been useful this season. You you very quickly got a shout out to a bus company, right? It's just a quick one because um, MH Travel, who um, one of my former work colleagues, it's her business venture. They are running a bus to Cardiff on Tuesday, obviously very last minute. Um, there's not many bus companies doing that at the moment. There, there used to be a few times, but then for whatever reason, it's not happened. So most people are either traveling down their own cars or they will pay through their nose for transport for Wales, trains, which have seen because the turnaround's short. I think I, I checked the other day, it's something like 85 quid or something. <laughs> You know, she's mad, really, uh, in the grand scheme of things. So, for less than half that, you can get the bus. I think it's it's thirty quid, thirty quid return to Cardiff on the uh, on Tuesday. So, MH Travel, check them out on all their socials. They're doing about nine or ten pickup points in the Wrexham area. Um, dead nice bus, dead roomy, dead cosy. It's a family friendly bus, though. It's, it's, a, it's a, a no alcohol no thing. Booze. Just, no booze, um, but you know. We're leaving at a reasonable time, so you still get to Cardiff kind of four or five o'clock. So there's plenty of time for a few beers when you get there, if you so desire. So and Tim, um, before we do quick predictions, do you have a so- do we have a song offering this week, or is is it just the Tom O'Connor uh, rock yeah. and roll? Just the just the, the the shitty one that I did last minute um, the other okay. day. I, I thought, I, I, yeah, I, I thought I'll give it a bit of a, a rest for a week, and then you know we're, we're, we're coming into the home straight. I'll come up with a good one about about. About the near post problem. I was going to say, yeah. incorporate the near post goal in. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's do predictions. Andy, starting with you, just the one game because we'll talk before Doncaster, but it's a good Friday uh, blockbuster. Mansfield at home. Will we be sending the Stags? I was trying to make a Jesus joke and thought better of it. Andy, will we beat Mansfield on Friday? 
<laughs> I mean, well, I, no, I want your Jesus joke, Pete. <laughs> Will we crucify the stags? Uh, <laughs> um, right, uh, look. So let's look at the, the matches we've lost at home. Uh, obviously, MK no, let's Don... not. Just just give us your prediction. No, mate. No, MK Don <laughs> was a bit different. Um, Bradford and Tramere won by defending deep and hitting us on the break. Mansfield will not do that. They didn't win on Saturday. They know that they need to come out and actually play to try and to try and win this league themselves. I think them opening up helps us. That's what we've been missing at home. The ability to break down teams because they've been so so behind the ball. So I think that gives us the best chance of beating them. I think we will beat them. I think of course it's going to be nervy. I think it's going to be very much like the Notts County game. I think it's going to be two one. I think um, I think we might they might take the lead, but I think we'll we'll come back and we'll, we'll, um, we'll the resurgent Mullin and Andy Cannon breaking the lines with Tom O'Connor sitting in behind and tidying up. I think that's where this match will be won. Liam. I'm going to keep it short and simple. Um, and you've done that thing again where you've let Andy go first, so I have to agree with him. Uh, I'm going 2 1 to us. Nice. Tim? Uh, I think the Friday game is almost this season's Notts County blockbuster from last year. I think he's got that feel about it. No, I'm not uh, going. Thanks, Tim. Sorry. You got your crew tickets to win, Jim. Yeah, um, I might just burn that outside outside the, the uh the You fan. forgot Tim is going. Burn it when you get to Nice. It's fine. <laughs> I'll send you a video from inside the ground. Um also on this probably give my prediction. Some people uh, Toes at the back got in touch about asking me how often have Tom O'Connor Cannon and Lee started in midfield for us before Saturday? I genuinely don't know. Mm. Not many. No, because that time. was the complaint earlier in the season, wasn't it? That he was playing O'Connor mm. in the back three. And, mm. and then we kind of realised it was actually working really well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we don't know. I mean, as you wouldn't argue with that three starting yeah. um, on, on Friday. So I think I think Andy's right. It's going to be cagey. But I just I think Wrexham would be so, so annoyed at the last couple of home games, not scoring getting done by Tramere. And uh, yeah, they just got to replicate what they did at Grimsby and we'll be fine. I, I think it'll... Mansfield, the toughest side I've seen us play this season, twice. And we, they haven't beaten us, so they'll have that going for them as well. But I think we'll edge it. And I think it'll be... I think it'll be 2-0. I think we'll do it 2-0. I think we'll keep a clean sheet. No no near post disasters. Keeler Dunn's have an off day. Um, and uh, the guy, I forgot his name, is John Bell. Shout out to him as well. He's, he's traveling, walking from Field Mill as is, as we speak to the race course to raise um, cash. Um, I can't remember which 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 one is for now, but if you look for, for walking walking for hope, you will find him. Um, but doing a great thing for charity, dressed as Deadpool and carrying a bathtub. But yeah, two 0 is my wow. um right. Just one thing. Let's let's play Mullin and Palmer. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. won't... Right. Um, I, I can understand him not starting every game if it's Saturday, Tuesday, but it's every week now. I think we've got to keep that that strike force. That's the most effective. Now, I mean, Fletcher comes... When Fletcher comes on, he's more effective than when he starts and uh, flicks and tricks and stuff can sometimes not not really not really come off, but they do after 70 minutes when the defence is tired. So, yeah, let's try and keep that. That's the most effective. Look, we lose games with those two up front. I've got no complaints. Mullin without Palmer's light, Ant without deck, Beans without toast. You know what I mean? You just got to have them. It just works. They they know each other's games. And it's, it, it was the case the other day. I, there was that bit where Palmer made like a 40-yard run. i never seen him run yeah. that fast in my life. He like, put, yeah. put the after burners on, so... Yeah, Muller and Palmer all the way taking us up. Three predictions, three winning predictions so far. Long time, long suffering listeners will know what's coming next. I'm <laughs> going to say one all. Oh, uh, apologies to everyone, but also I don't think just to, just to uh, preempt some of the of the meltdown that that would not be a bad result at all, and I would take it if you offered it to me now. And on that note uh thank you everyone for listening really appreciate it you can get in touch in many different ways you can get in touch on x formerly twitter you can email andy and andy gilpin at hotmail.com um 
but it's until Andrew next Gilpin week, at hotmail.com, actually, you've got that wrong. <laughs> Andrew Gilpin <laughs> at hotmail.com. I mean, Sorry, Andy you... Gilpin at hotmail.com actually emails me thinking you know, I'm, I'm his son. <laughs> and he keeps talking me talking about the kitchen renovation they're doing. <laughs> wow. Can we, okay. Amazing. Can we plug our legal fund because we've um, offended a lot <laughs> yeah. of people on this podcast. There's. Yeah. Sorry to the Pogba brothers. Um, yeah. Jeremy Only Vine. Only sorry to one of them. Buy us, yeah, buy us a coffee if you want to uh, fund that. But yeah, thanks for listening and see you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, can I just say Take one care. thing? Oh. Right. <laughs> Brother of Juventus star Pogba released from prison after alleged 11 million extortion extent. Uh, that is on goal 24th of uh, December. Um so, so we, we were right and we have nothing to worry about. Please Great. still come yeah. on the podcast. The truth <laughs> will set us free. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.